In August 1940, a Dornier 17 was shot down by the RAF as it returned home from a bombing mission over the Kent coast. 70 years later, the RAF Museum plans to raise the Dornier from its watery grave in order that it be displayed here in London at the Battle of Britain collection. This video tells the story of that operation. The aircraft in question was actually based at Saint Tron, which is uh, in Belgium, just east of Brussels. And on August 26, 1940, it was um, one of a formation of nine Dorniers that were due to bomb Manston Aerodrome in Kent. The secondary aim was not just to attack the RAF airfield, but to draw up as many RAF fighters as possible so the German single-engine fighters escorting them could shoot down as many RAF fighters as possible. What actually happened to the Dorniers was uh, a formation of Bolton Paul Defiance from 264 Squadron got in underneath the bomber formation and opened fire with their turret fighters. We believe that our particular aircraft had both engines disabled, which is why the aircraft had to force land on the Goodwin Sands. We believe local divers first discovered the plane because of reports from fishermen that their nets had snagged. Um, but the plane was only formally confirmed when English Heritage commissioned a survey of the entire coastline and this aircraft emerged in, in quite stark detail uh, because of the um, sonar uh, maps that emerged. I cannot stress to you how important this aeroplane is. I mean, it's the missing link in our collection. I mean, the Germans had three main bomber types in the Battle of Britain, the Harkin 111, the Uncas 88, and the Dornier 17. Everyone's forgotten about the Dornier 17. We've got examples of the Heinkel 111 and the Junkers here, but they're both much later variants of the types in the battle. We've now got a chance to acquire a genuine Dornier 17 that actually flew in the Battle of Britain, linked to an iconic event in British history. This is the Bolton Paul Defiant, the type of aircraft we believe actually shot down the Dornier 17 on the Goodwin Sands. You probably notice it's got a gun turret just behind the pilot. This was a new concept in uh, RAF fighter design during the 1930s, focusing all the armament in a turret behind the pilot rather than focusing it inside the wings. During the Battle of Britain, the uh, Defiant had some great success during the early parts of the battle, but the Germans soon got wise to the fact that the guns were all focused in the turret rather than the wings, and they began to attack the aircraft from forward. From that point on, the Defiant suffered very, very heavy casualties. 264 Squadron at West Morling were the first squadron to be fitted with Defiance as a day fighter role. And uh, the first day they were in operation against the people coming, well, the radars coming in. They were very successful because the Germans came in with, on a rear attack. And of course the gunners just shot them to ribbons. The Germans quickly found the answer to that by coming in and doing a frontal attack. So all the pilot could do was to try and avoid them because he had got no guns to fire. He had just got four Brownings in the turret. So really, you, you begin to think of yourself as a taxi driver. If this is the aircraft we believe it is, um, the pilot and one other crew member survived. Both were taken prisoner, uh, initially in the UK and then to Canada. Two others were killed. Uh, one's body was washed up on the UK, the other was washed up uh, in Holland both now uh, lie in those countries. So once it's recovered from the, the channel, the Dornier needs conservation to uh, make sure we can exhibit it safely. And that's going to take at least two years. While it's being conserved, we want the public to be able to understand the story, the history of the aircraft, the conservation, the rescue, um, and wargaming are helping us do that by creating exhibits here in London and up at Cosford where the Dornier will be exhibited. It might seem unusual for a video game company to work with a museum, but history is part of the DNA of our company. Since our founding, we've made games about military history. The Wargaming team includes active duty military, military veterans, aviation enthusiasts, and pilots. Uh, we're strong supporters of history, both in our games and in the real world. A visitor will be able to get their smartphone, um, and the plan is that they'll download an app, and then when they hold, hold their phone up to the shadow that's on the floor, that's like a body chalk line, then they'll see a full-size 3D model of the Dornier hovering above that and they'll be able to walk around it and inspect it in virtual space. So something, you know, bring, bringing back to life the thing that, that doesn't really exist anymore. So okay, I'm at the, uh, the stern end of the aircraft looking towards the bow. Um, the visibility is reasonably good. I must have six to eight feet. 
and I'm just uh, moving around the aircraft and seeing how much is exposed from the sea of any places. Well, the, the aircraft's lying in 60 feet of water, uh, which means it's just a little bit too deep for divers to work um, without uh, the need for um, coming to the surface. Also, the Goodwin Sands are notorious for the uh, high currents and low visibility. So um, the, the, the circumstances that we believe protected the aircraft by covering it rapidly in sand are uh, problems in terms of recovering it. Ten minutes left, Paul. 10 minutes for you. Propellers are still there, the engines are there, although one of them has been torn off and facing towards the fuselage. Probably still attached on the, on the port side of it. We're trying to uh, build a frame around the wreck of the aircraft um, so we can lay frame underneath it. The usual process is they pick it up and put it on a frame, but it's that delicate. We thought if we build the frame around the aircraft, then it's only one lift. Just trying to identify which bit of the landed on now. This is quite special because a huge battle was fought here and here we are on the surface of the sea under the whole territory of the, of the, the skies where these desperate battles, desperate battles were fought very, very hard and very, very quickly and then suddenly after these combats they were left in open sky in total silence wondering what had just happened to them if they'd survived. Um, the good news is the aircraft's ready to lift and if we can find a suitable weather window um, in the near future we'll be back out and we'll raise the aircraft. Next step after we've recovered the aircraft will be to disassemble it on, on the, uh, the shore here uh, and then we'll transport it to our conservation centre at Cosford. Um, throughout that process though we'll be keeping the aircraft wet and we'll apply a protective gel. The purpose is to uh, keep oxygen away from the structure. The next stage is for us to build a visitor centre up at Cosford so when people go they'll be able to go and look at the polytunnels and find out a bit more information and we'll be presenting um, a front elevation, life size elevation of the Dornier because obviously it's going to be quite some time before we can actually see the plane for real because it needs to be conserved for about 15 months to 24 months so it's, it's going to be quite a long time before people can really engage with the object. The world's last remaining Dornier 17 flying after a fashion for the first time in over 70 years. Badly corroded, upside down and its fuselage twisted but recognizably an aircraft. There's no denying the plane's in a pretty rough state, but what's remarkable is how much of it has survived. The undercarriage, for instance, with the tyres still fully inflated. The engines have fallen off, they're still on the sea floor and they'll be picked up tomorrow. But look, here's one of the propellers in remarkably good condition. And in the hub, there's even some of the original 1940s grease. The salvage attempt has been dogged by bad weather and some bad luck. Today's lift almost had to be postponed when one of the salvage barge's anchor cables snagged its propeller. For the RAF Museum, which has spent more than £600,000 on the project, it was a huge relief. This is a tremendous piece of history. I mean, the last remaining example of the Dornier 17. We're preserving her for generations. She will commemorate the sacrifice made by both sides during the Battle of Britain and help us to give a wider understanding of um, that phase of that particular part of the air war.